Think about how you got to school this morning. Did you ride the bus? Get dropped off in a car? Ride your bike? Walk? Chances are you were transported in a vehicle. Where did that vehicle get its energy? Most cars and buses use gasoline or diesel to get energy to take us from place to place. Gasoline and diesel are liquid fuels that are made from crude oil, which is one type of fossil fuel. Our modern world relies on the energy from burning fossil fuels not only to transport us in cars, buses, and airplanes, but also to make electricity and produce products like plastics. Let's look closer at what fossil fuels are. Fossil fuels include natural gas, coal, and crude oil. The fossil fuels we use today were made hundreds of millions of years ago, long before humans, mammals, or even dinosaurs existed on Earth. At that time, the algae and other ocean organisms used carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and energy from the sun to live and grow, just like plants do now. When these organisms died, their stored carbon matter and energy from the sun was buried under layers of sand and rock. Over millions of years, the buried organisms and all of their stored carbon and energy slowly turned into crude oil and natural gas from the heat and pressure deep in the earth. This crude oil can be extracted and processed to create transportation fuels, such as gasoline and diesel. So what's the problem with using fossil fuels? One problem with burning fossil fuels for energy is that because they are formed over millions of years, there is a limited amount buried underground. Once we use it up, it takes hundreds of millions of years before there is more to use. Because fossil fuels will run out, they are not renewable. But the biggest problem with using oil in our cars, trucks, and planes is its impact on our atmosphere. When we burn it, we are putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When fossil fuels are burned, both the stored energy and carbon are released. The stored energy is used to power your vehicle. The stored carbon is released in the form of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. It traps the heat of the sun, causing the earth to stay warm. Some carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a good thing. It keeps the world from being too cold. But begin adding too much and the earth gets warmer and causes the climate to change. And over time, these changes can lead to extreme weather, rising sea levels, and the destruction of plant and animal habitats. How can we power our cars, trucks, and airplanes without using fossil fuels? We need an alternative that will not run out and does not put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. One possible solution is to make our fuels, such as gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel, from plants. Why are fuels from plants better than fossil fuels? First, plants, or biomass, are a renewable source of carbon. Since plants can regrow in a short amount of time after harvesting, we consider them renewable. Second, plants use the energy from the sun and the carbon dioxide in the air to help them grow, so they are not adding extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. As the plants grow, they store the energy and carbon for future use in the form of sugar. Third, plants arrange some of their sugars into a complex structure called cellulose. Cellulose is a basic building block of tough cell walls that make stems, leaves, and branches so strong. Almost 50% of a plant is composed of sugar, and this sugar can be converted into fuel. One third of the land on Earth is covered in plants. There are many different types of plants that are used in a variety of ways. There are grasses, trees, and everything in between. Some of these plants humans can grow for food. Some plants need a lot of water to grow, while other plants can grow where there is limited water or in extreme conditions. The fuel made from these plants is called biofuel. Making biofuels is a new and rapidly growing area of research. One place where scientists all come together to study how to make biofuels is the Joint Bioenergy Institute, or JBay for short, in Emeryville, California. Let's meet some of the people working on creating biofuels. First, let's meet a plant biologist. Plant biologists are researching which plants make the best biomass for biofuels. Plants are a good source of sugar. In fact, almost 50% of a plant is made of sugar. This sugar is stored carbon that can be converted into biofuel. Currently, biofuel is made from plants, like sugarcane and corn, which are all food crops. As a plant biologist, I'm interested in studying different kinds of plants that can be used as a source of sugar. When doing this, 
I consider whether a new plant will compete with our food crops and how much biofuel can be produced. We can use what we know to make new kinds of plants that are even better for biofuels. Plant biologists aren't the only scientists investigating biofuels. Let's meet a fuel bioengineer who is interested in figuring out the best way to convert plant sugars into biofuels. Microbes, like yeast and bacteria, convert sugars into fuel. The organisms use the stored carbon in sugars to make substances that can replace crude oil-based fuel. Some microbes are better at this process than others. I work on finding microbes and even modifying them to make different types of biofuels in the quickest and most efficient way possible. The next scientist we'll meet is a deconstruction biochemist who studies how to break down plants into simple sugars for the microbes to convert to fuels. The cell walls of plants contain a lot of sugars, but they are inaccessible to microbes. The sugars are stuck together in complex chains called cellulose and surrounded by other hard to remove material. I study how to make the sugar accessible in a process called deconstruction. This involves heating the biomass of the plants and treating it with enzymes and other substances. This process helps break down the cellulose in the plant cell walls and removes the other non-sugar material. One last group working at JP who also helps study how to make biofuels is the technology expert team. The technology team provides resources and support to other scientists and engineers to help them better understand plants, micros, and chemistry. Sometimes they help analyze data, develop faster ways to do more experiments, or build equipment to study biofuels. These researchers, the plant biologists, the fuel bioengineer, the deconstruction biochemist, and the technology team, and many others like them, work together at JBay. They all play a role in figuring out how to make biofuels in the best way possible. After hearing about the scientists at JBay and the ways they work together to make better fuels, we hope you'll want to learn more about biofuels and other ways to reduce our use of fossil fuels. Figuring out how the world can become less dependent on crude oil-based fuels is vital for the health of our planet. By finding alternatives, we will no longer add stored carbon from fossil fuels into the atmosphere. Our world needs smart people like you to help us figure it out.